Well, good morning, everybody. Here we are the next day, and I just thought we are having a fish fry tonight, so I thought wouldn't it be kind of fun to just bring you along on all of the food prep for that and maybe whatever else happens today. And I was not expecting this. <laughs> Look at all of that snow. Huge fluffy flakes. It's not really amounting to a whole lot on the ground right now. And you can see most of our snow is already gone. We got a lot of rain. Um, was that over the weekend or early in this week? I feel like it was over the weekend. And pretty much all of our snow is gone. And I don't know exactly what Peter is doing down there, but he went out. I think he's trying to see if there's any um, any geese flying back. Yesterday he found, he saw a goose, and so he took his call and he was trying to call it in. So maybe he, maybe there's a goose down there. I don't really know, but anyway, that little moving line down there is Peter. <laughs> Maria just told me that Peter is down looking in the aerator hole for suckers. So the first thing I have going are just a few potatoes. I can't believe that I'm, this is the last of those 25 pounds of potatoes that I bought. So just a few potatoes and then I have some eggs over here going and that is just the start of potato salad for today. I'm just working on the coleslaw. This recipe calls for both milk and buttermilk, but if you don't have buttermilk, I just increase the milk to a half a cup, and in that, ha actually what I do is I put some lemon juice in the bottom of my measuring cup first, then add milk up to the half cup line, and that, once you let it like kind of, kind of stir it around a little bit, and it will kind of, you'll see it, it'll thicken, it'll kind of curdle just a little bit, and then you have basically buttermilk. I know there's a dry, a powdered buttermilk as well that works. Um, I just, and I've had it before, but I just don't have any right now. So that's what I normally do for buttermilk, just lemon juice and milk. I'm just stirring around the coleslaw mix here. I'm going to get a cover on this, pop this in the fridge, because this is just a great addition to fish fry. Because if you are from Wisconsin and you go anywhere for a fish fry, <laughs> potato salad and coleslaw are always options to go with it. So I have the potatoes all done. I'm just going to let those cool. When they're a little bit more cool than they are right now, I will pop those in the fridge to get really cold before I slice them. I also have the eggs over here. Whoop, the water has kind of gotten back to warm. So I'm going to let this water, uh, drain this water off and put some cold water back onto my eggs.
So I just put together the potato salad. I have all the eggs and the potatoes in here, some salt, some pepper, and just a tiny, tiny bit of ground mustard, like dry ground mustard. And then I have some mayo and some Miracle Whip. I usually mix it up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to get this stirred in, and I'll probably need some more. I'm out of mayo, but I have plenty of Miracle Whip, so if I need more, that's what I'll be using in here. And that's all I do for potato salad. The radishes give it kind of a nice crunch. I love that crunch. I didn't like it as a kid, but I love it now as an adult. And funny, even when I didn't like radishes, oh, God bless you, Maria. Even when I did not like radishes and I would make potato salad, I still always put the radishes in just because that's how my mom did it. And so, but I'd pick the radishes out put them on the side of my plate and end up throwing them away. So I don't know, that just seems crazy. But anyway, that was me as a younger person. <laughs> now I just eat it all. Click this right here. Push that in and then pull the handle back. So. Yep. And you're going to want to be over here, Peter, so that as you crank, you have the right Everybody leverage, okay? Um, I usually put it from the top. Yep. And the most important part is getting that on straight so that it peels straight. We're starting in on desserts now, and I wanted to do a big pan of apple crisp. Yep, snap it up. There you go. Oh, what just happened there, huh? Okay, just a sec. See, there's definitely, it takes a little finesse. It doesn't just work every single time. Kids always, always want to do this. And I have to tell you, it doesn't always work perfectly, so you do... You kind of have to get into a rhythm when you're using an apple peeler quarter slicer. We're going to peel up all of these apples. I have a few more apples out in the garage fridge. If this is not enough, I'm already thinking there's no way this is going to be enough. So I'm going to go get the other ones from the garage fridge. And we're going to fill this up with apples. And then I will make my grandma's apple, uh, apple crisp topping. And we'll pop this in the oven for about... 40-ish, maybe 45 minutes. So Grandma's Apple Crisp recipe is in my cookbook. It's on page 54. And this here recipe is for four cups of sliced apples. When I do it in my great big 10 by 15 Pyrex dish, I know that that is at least eight cups, maybe even a little bit more. So I, I normally, I just double this and it turns out just right. Really, no matter how many apples I have, you know, even if it's over eight cups, I guess basically what I'm trying to say to you is I just fill up this dish, which is a 10 by 15, and then I double the topping. So first I'm going to sprinkle on the cinnamon. Let's see, I always sprinkle on the cinnamon and the salt, pour over some water, and then I'll rub together the flour, the sugar, and the butter, and I'll drop the mixture over the apples. And I go easy on the salt. I don't think that... Um, I, I just feel like you need to go easy on the salt. I don't, I don't like to double the salt. <laughs> it's about two teaspoons of cinnamon. I don't usually measure that out. I just <laughs> pour some cinnamon over until it looks like the amount that I want. And then here is a half cup of water. I have written on my, written in the cookbook that I normally triple everything because again, I know if I measured out these apples, this would be way over eight cups of apples. Yeah, maybe I should triple the topping. Everybody loves the topping. Hmm, what to do, what to do? Maria, double or triple? I don't know. You don't know? Just say one and that's what I'll do. Double or triple? Oh, it's so complicated. <laughs> Triple. Triple? Peter says triple? Triple. Triple, triple it is. Triple. What does this mean? Two, zero, Two Probably 2%. Two percent milk is what they're telling you. Okay, so one fourth cup, two percent milk, and one fourth cup margarine. Or butter. So double that. All right, so I have my flour and my sugar, and I went a little easy on the sugar because I thought that the apples were very sweet. But sometimes if you have a tartar apple, like a Granny Smith, then you want to go with all the sugar. Otherwise, sometimes it's just a little too tart. Well, it's definitely a better workout to use to use the pastry blender than it is to use a food processor. All right, so look at that. It looks kind of crumbly 
and kind of pea-like. See the sizes there when you kind of go like this. It's just right. So I'm going to get that poured over top of, and look at that, perfect timing. The oven is preheated. So let me get this over top of the apples and get that in for about 40 minutes, maybe a little bit longer because, you know, I have such a big container. Yep, I hear it. That is a big fish. This is Maria's Big Northern and uh, Peter's Big Northern. Look at the flays on there. Wow, oh, from last summer? No, this is the one they caught oh, this winter. Oh, the ice fishing ones, yeah. The big ones. So Warren's in, it's lunchtime, and he's just kind of cleaning up the fish, and you know, we like to rinse it and then pat it dry. I just feel like, I don't know, just get a better quality product if you rinse the fish. Um, yeah, so he's just doing that. How many can Is this all of it right here? Yeah. And here's a whole bunch of fish. These look more like crap. No. No, uh, this is all northern? Yeah, those were uh, some of the Peter boys. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah, what we normally do is we'll cut these into like little bits. Whoops. Yeah, what little we little normally smaller. do is cut these into little bit smaller pieces and then... And then what are you going to do? Yeah, so I'll, we'll just cut those a little bit smaller. About like that. And then we'll dip that in. Do we do egg and milk or just milk? We've done it both ways. All right. Both ways. So I think usually the last time I just did milk. Yeah, if you just do milk, it gets like a little bit more of a... A little thinner. Yeah, thinner and a little bit more kind of like crumbly kind of a batter. Whereas if you do the egg too, it just kind of sticks on a little bit more. So maybe we'll add egg tonight. I don't really know. Yeah. But uh, then once the fillets are covered in the milk and egg, then we just roll them in crushed uh, crackers. And we use... Mm -hmm. Saltines. Saltines. Crushed saltines. And then drop them into the hot oil and deep fry them. Mm -hmm. I probably don't have the best knife for this, but... No, nope, you don't. That's fine. <laughs> that's a tomato knife. Well, you know, that's what I'm using today. Yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible Here's knife. Here's a bone I forgot. It's a horrible knife. <laughs> no, that's not a bone. What is that? Uh, Looks like a piece of... I don't know what. Hmm. You can edit that out. Yep. Wait Big. In. Yeah, right in the middle. We don't have to get that like skin stuff off. That's okay. That's fine. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> now that Jennifer showed me how to cut fish. Switch to a new knife. You know, you, you just kind of well, grab a knife now she did that. There. Yeah. See, See? That's, that's how it's supposed to be done. You know. Oh, he pulled it back. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> I think that I should be fired and I should just go back out in the woods where I was and let Jennifer take over because she <laughs> seems to have the skills. Hmm. <laughs> You're funny. So the apple crisp is out of the oven now. I did leave it in an extra five or so minutes just because I wanted the top to get kind of golden like that. I like it to get, um, you know, kind of kind of crunchy. That's that's. That's how I like it the best. Now I just have my stand mixer here because what I'm going to do, I'm going to make one of these pies again. So it's just a no-bake cheesecake, basically. And I'm going to use a container of whipped topping and then uh, one block of cream cheese, a little bit of powdered sugar. So I'm trying to remember what I used last time. I feel like it was somewhere around a half a cup or so of powdered sugar and a little bit of vanilla. And then normally I would put some kind of fruit, kind of like what they show here, but I don't have any cherry pie filling. I just looked and I don't have any fresh strawberries. And those would be the things I would normally put on. Okay, I'm on my phone for 10 minutes and I'm I look out here, I'm like, 
Is Peter outside building a fort? <laughs> <laughs> you got windows and everything. You like that? Oh, oh yeah, my god. You want to see who's on the other side? <laughs> It is so windy. It's supposed to get even windier today, so I guess he's building a little little blockade, huh? Well, gotta <laughs> keep the wind out so we can keep the heat on the fish and and the upside is I'm close to the fire extinguisher. Very good. I like that. Alright. It's my favorite part of it. <laughs> there must be a hole in here somewhere. How much do you think should go in here? That's funny. Throw all the fish in there and slosh around and then bring that right out to the grease so I can just drop, drop, drop. Yep. So I got a full paint on that. One and a half hours, Maria. She wants to watch when calls the heart. And I told her three o'clock. So there's other things that can be done before three. Yes. Yes, that's some beautiful soda, Joe. All right, well that is looking like some beautiful fish. And his little system is working really well. He's got the cardboard to protect the concrete. He's got his little cardboard house that he built. <laughs> These are walleyes now from Nick, so oh, those, are those are thick. Those are oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't catch fish this big. Yeah, I went fishing uh, that spring out there and just hammered the walleyes. Wow. Oh, it is cold. It is here. cold. Yeah. yeah, these are nice and big. These will uh, cool that grease down. I don't have what? tartar sauce. Well, that's right. And I'm out of mayo and I'm out of Miracle Whip for making the potato salad. We'll survive. Look at that. Oh, oh those oh, are yeah. beautiful. It's like a fish steak. Yeah, right yes. There. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that super dark thing is. I don't know. <laughs> that's a piece that's been in there yeah. <laughs> since, said since the last batch. It got missed a couple times, I think. <laughs> all right, I think that's all of it. That's perfect. You get up close, be like, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I get the one. It's like, strings. Oh, it doesn't want to It doesn't want to This is already my second helping of apple crisp. Gotta have more just to make sure I like it. <laughs> 